Hello, everyone. This is another Black Conservative. I'm Ryan Bowling. Thank you all for joining me. So the video that I'm about to do here is in reference to the mayor of South Fort Fulton, Georgia, who allegedly went inside a house, which I guess he may have thought was abandoned or whatever. I'm going to get into the details of that later in my uh, commentary. But the owner showed up and, and asked him to leave. Uh, and then when he didn't want to leave, the owner pulled, he had a gun on him and asked him to leave, said, you got to get out. So the, the mayor responded by saying, do you know who the F I am? Now, before I get into the article, I want to say right up front, I had already seen this video on a very prominent uh, YouTube channel. I think it was Anthony Brown Logan, ABL, whom people have often compared me to. I am in no comparison to ABL, and I'm not trying to be ABL. Let me clear that up right up front. He was one, and as other YouTubers have ones that have inspired me to do my own thing, as well as friends of mine. So, okay, but I, I'm, I'm Ryan. Okay, just because we have similarities don't mean that I'm trying to be like him or anything like that. My edge is usually communism and Marxism, so that's mostly what my niche edge is. That's what I talk about the most. So, but I'm not trying to be like anyone. But anyway, let's clear that out the way. Yeah. I've already seen this video, and I've already heard other views on this, but I have my own take on this situation here so what we're going to do we're going to get right into this uh article which is very short and i'm going to give you my my commentary on what i believe the mindset of this mayor really was okay so let's get right into this article and and let me point something out i cannot and will not even attempt to pronounce this man's name i will spell it out and then once we go further, I'm going to say the mayor of South Fulton, okay? These names, I don't know where they come from. But anyway, the article starts off, South Fulton Mayor, K-H-A-L-I-D-K-A-M-A-U. If you can pronounce that, do that, okay? Was held at gunpoint Saturday morning just before 7 a.m. after allegedly breaking into a lake house. WSBT. TV reported the property owner pulled a gun on the mayor and told him to, quote, stay out. OK, now uh, what's interesting about this, let me bring something out here. What's interesting about this, it doesn't state where exactly the prop property owner came at, at, at the mayor. I mean, was the property owner inside the home? Uh, was he outside the home and he drove up and saw the mayor entered into his home or was he outside the home, drove up, got the car, went inside the home and saw the mayor in there and then pulled the gun out. The article doesn't give that information. This article is very condensed, very short. OK, so I can only elaborate on what I'm giving here. OK, uh, but apparently he pulled a gun out on the mayor and told him to stay out. Now, here's the killing part right here. The mayor allegedly ignored the command. Now, the man has pulled a gun out of you and it's telling you to get out and you ignore the command. Why? Could have got shot, bruh. But anyway, so the lake house owner told him to stay put once more, to which the mayor replied, do you know who the F I am? Now, my question is, my question is this. Why would you respond that way? Now, I'm going to elaborate on what I believe that 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 uh, my boy Anthony Brown Logan stated that he may have gone inside the uh, the mayor may have gone inside the home thinking that it was abandoned, you know, think it was abandoned and he may have wanted to buy another house or whatever. And he decided to go inside and th thinking it was abandoned. And that may be true. But here's the thing. Instead of him responding, I'm going to add to that. Instead of him responding and say, oh, I'm sorry, sir. I thought the place was abandoned. Forgive me for that. I just want you to know I am the mayor of, 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 of South Fulton, Georgia. I am the mayor, and I thought the place was abandoned. I apologize. The man pulled, had pulled a gun out of you, asked you to get out. You ignore him. Then he says, stay put. And what do you say? Do you know who the F I am? You sound like a street thug. And... If you look at, I'm going to get deeper into the commentary on this. If you look at the photo of the mayor, he's in a car <laughs> with a shirt 
on that said he's standing in a car with a shirt on that says black on purpose. So you already know where he's coming from with this photo shirt, you know. But this photo uh, of him with the shirt saying black on purpose was during the 2022 uh, June 9th, Juneteenth uh, uh, celebration. He's in the car with his fists up like this with a shirt on, you know, uh, uh, black on purpose. So right then and there, when I saw that, I, I was like, okay, I know where he's coming from. I already know the attitude. And I couldn't help but think, was the per owner of the house who pulled the gun out on him white or black? The article doesn't say, I've, 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 I've looked at other videos, it doesn't say whether or not the person was white or black. I can't help but wonder if the person was white. Because let's go on further into because the way he responded, but it, but he could be black. I mean, it, it, trust me and believe, you. You all know how the mainstream media does. Look, <laughs> you know we know how this stuff goes. Unfortunately, race is a major factor because the mainstream media and the liberal establishment makes it all about race. And here we got this black power guy with his fist standing, you know, up in the, in the air with a shirt on, standing in a car like he's in the hood, talking about black on purpose and celebrating Juneteenth, you know, whatever, man. So anyway, it goes on to say, the mayor then did as he was told, but added, quote, I'll wait for my police to get here and see what happens then. I'll wait for my police and to get there and see what happens then. Why not just say, I'll wait for the police to get here why is it my police now one could elaborate on it and, and say well he, he probably slipped he was angry no you're the mayor anger angry or not when he said i'll wait for my police to get here what that suggests to me is is that the police are working for you to help you and your communist marxist agenda rather than for the people of south fulton what's interesting about this and what's disturbing about this to me is that this mayor, <laughs> and I'm giving you guys my opinion view on this, looks just like my mayor, Bibbs, here in the city of Cleveland. The same worldview, progressive Democrat, all about the blackity black, 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 the black, black, black. That's what he's all about. <laughs> I'm not going to go into the details about <laughs> how messed up Bib my, my mayor is. OK, or the mayor of the city of Cleveland. OK, but when I saw the uh, the uh, photo of the mayor of South Fulton, Georgia, I'm like, man, this guy looks strikingly like him. You know, strikingly like him. But I'm like, oh, oh, my God, you know, this is just crazy. Anyway, let's go on. Let's go on. The New York Post noted that the mayor praised South Fulton police after the incident was over, describing them as, quote, courteous and professional. Or oh, they're your police. They're your police. Okay. Uh, Fox 5 Atlanta pointed out the mayor apologized for any, quote, negative attention that incident brought to the city. Now, first people might think, okay, well, he apologized, but let's go on. Let's go on. He added, I hope the spotlight on our city right now will highlight some of the inequities that have been happening will highlight some of the inequities that have been happening. In other words, this incident that occurred is all about getting attention because, you know, it's voting time. Voting time's coming up. It's all about getting, that's like the same thing with my own mayor. It's all about getting attention so you can get them votes coming in. I get it. Conservatives do it too. But far as I'm concerned, they do it for more positive reasons, you know, more informed reasons, the way I see it. That's just my opinion on it. That's the way I'm going to stand on it. But, uh, you know, it, 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 it's not about really the people's about trying to get attention on the inequities. I'm going to give you my view on these so-called inequities in a minute here. But it says the mayor, but it, it, the article goes on to say the mayor was a community organizer. Ah, so was former President Obama, a community organizer. Hadn't did anything special, but he was a community organizer. And out of nowhere, he became the president. Think about it. The mayor was a community organizer prior to being elected to the city council in 2017. He was sworn in as mayor of South Fulton in 2022. And that's the end of that article there. Look. Oh, man, that brings back so many bad 
views and memories with me here. But first of all, I want to address this whole idea of what the mayor said about the, uh, this, this incident with hopefully bring attention to the inequities of his city. But when we think about inequities, oftentimes liberals and the liberal establishment, oftentimes their argument is usually this uh, when it comes to inequities and disparities among the black community, is that these disparities and inequities are caused by racism, systemic racism and, and discrimination. But the problem with that is, is that that is not always true. That is not always true. That's the, that's the story they spin, but that is not always true. Number one, every instance of inequities is not race-based. If you have a black family or a black person that goes in to try to buy a home, okay, and you have a white person that goes in to buy, try to buy a home within a particular neighborhood, Nine times out of ten, if the white person gets the uh, the home, nine times out of ten is not going to necessarily be because they were white. It will be because they have the money, they have the collateral. Unfortunately, a significant number of blacks are turned down for buying nicer houses and so forth because they don't have no money. They broke. Okay. <laughs> And being broke it, it, it is not necessarily systemic racism. And I can go into another video with that, but, but, but most of the time it's because blacks do not have the money nor the collateral to buy a nice home in a nice neighborhood. Usually, white people and, 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 and Asians tend to have more money. So the disparity or the inequities there is not necessarily always race racial in terms of what's going on today in 2023 most real estate agents businesses corporations most of the time are not going to discriminate against blacks and people of color or whatever but i'm speaking of blacks in particular because they're black if that was true then why do you have so many black people who have money in neighborhoods upper uh uh, uh, prosperous neighborhoods you know what I'm talking about gated communities you might not have a lot of them but why do you have those individuals there now somebody might argue well the white establishment picked them bull crap bull crap because if that was the case then then that would mean that the per black person don't have to have any money white establishment just pick them as a token black person to say hey we got black people living in our neighborhood but can't afford anything no they pick them because they have the money. It, they have the money to buy the home, to put down on home. That's why they pick them. It's not, always, it's not always based on their race. And especially in 2023 America, not back in the days, maybe in the 1920s and 30s and so forth, before all of this type of, before the Fair Housing Act was, was initiated in 1964 and so forth under Lyndon B. Johnson, but I ain't going to go into the detail of that because he was a flat-out racist before and after, but that's another story, and I, and I digress. I'm not going to get into that. There was a, a discrimination against blacks due to their color. But even in that aspect, according to the research of Thomas Sowell, and you can read his books on it as he documents this. In many instances, when many of the slaves had, had been set free after the emancipation, the proclamation was initiated, and after the Civil War was initiated, and many of the blacks were set free, a lot of businesses, particularly in the North and sometimes even in the South, hired more blacks than they did whites. And part of the reason for that was because blacks were willing at that time to work for little or nothing. I mean, they were willing to work, you know, they, they, they didn't care about how much. They, they was willing to work long hours and so forth. They was willing to do that. Now, that could be argued, but the point was they was willing to work. A lot of the whites weren't willing to do that. I don't want to do that. That's, I'm not getting paid enough. I'm not this. I'm not that. Shame on them. Because the, 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 the corporations, I will hire the blacks because they want to work. Okay. The other reason was because blacks back at that time had a strong work history. 
and they had integrity back in those days. So a lot of businesses and so forth would hire blacks even more so than whites during that time. And that's a fact based on the research of Thomas Sowell. Read his books on that. You'll find out he documents this type of stuff. So a lot of time, let's move to 2023, Amer 2023 America. Let's be realistic. When you don't have the money, you're not going to get it more than likely. And see, this is what liberals are trying to do. They're talking about trying to bring fair housing and fair all this. But in order for you to do that, you have to take from people who already have and give to people who don't have in order to do that. How do they do that? They do that through taxation. They bring down the person that has money through raising taxes and then takes that and gives it to people that don't have it in the name of fairness and equity. But is it really or is it really another attempt to destroy people's property? I'll say it's another attempt to destroy property, property and also take away property, which is a soft, quiet, non-violent form of communism. That's what that is. You knew I was going to come up with that one. You knew that was coming. OK, so this mayor here in making this statement that, you know, hopefully this incident will bring uh, uh, attention to the inequities. Man, come on. To me, this shows you he's a mayor without integrity. Number one, he's this young guy. OK, he's young, which is nothing wrong with being young. But I, I, the reason why I make that statement is because when the mayor Bibbs was, 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 it, uh, was elected, I had people coming up to me and I shared this with some of my coworkers yesterday and some of the police officers just that we were talking. And uh, people would come up to me and they would be like, and, I, and they would ask me, did you, they would say, did you vote? I said, I said uh, yes. And they would say, uh, did, you, did, you, did you vote for um, uh, the new mayor? I said, I said, no. So, oh man, you should vote for me. I, I, I said, well, why, sh why, 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 sh why should I vote for him? Well, their answer was, and this was a white girl told me this. Well, their answer was, um, well, because, you know, he's young, he's vibrant, he's black. And I said, so basically what you're suggesting to me is that I should vote for him because he's young, vibrant, and black. Forget about policies because the policies is what's going to dictate the course of the city. Forget about that. Vote for him because he's young, black, and vibrant. And I guess she, as a white girl, must have felt good for about herself. Well, I'm voting for a black man and I'm really supporting him to make her feel good. To, to suppress the idea of white guilt or I'm doing something now. No, you're not. You're putting in office with your votes someone who's trying to destroy the city. And that is exactly what he's doing. Police officers are moving out. Crime is on the rise in our city. Just the other day. Someone was downtown in the flats shooting people with pellet guns. Now, mind you, a week or so ago, we just had someone go off and shoot nine people on West 6th in the, in the warehouse district. And a week before that, on Ontario, a man was shot in the stomach and, according to some resources, died. Crime is going up in the city of Cleveland. Gee, I wonder why. I'm just saying. Progressive liberals, which is what this mayor is here, is no different than all the rest. It's all about attention and getting votes, and it's not really about helping the family, helping the black community. The policies that these progressives are putting forth in the black community that they claim they love <coughs> is not helping the black community. It's hurting the black community, particularly when it comes to the area of crime. Let's assume, and I'm going to sum this video up because I could go on with this. I know I'm going, went longer than I normally do. Let's assume you get this fair housing and all this type of stuff, okay? How are you going to enjoy all of this fair housing and, and fair this and fair this and all these benefits that the government is giving you? How are you going to enjoy them, any of it, when the crime, the crime rate is sky high? You're not going to be able to enjoy it because you're going to be constantly walking around on eggshells, looking behind your back. You're not going to be able to enjoy anything because you don't value law and order. And neither, well, I'm not, well, maybe I shouldn't say you don't value law and order. But you've been blinded to the reality of crime around you and have been brainwashed by the mainstream liberal media 
to believe, oh, it's just, you know, they committing these crimes because they're in poverty and they're poor and they've been oppressed and so forth. We got to stop believing that lie, man. That is a lie. Because if that's true, then every poor person in the ghetto should be robbing people, stealing from people, keeping people, I mean, all kinds of stuff. That is a lie, people. The progressive Democrats are destroying this country and they're particularly destroying the black community and we need to vote them out. If you value law and order, don't vote for these progressive Democrats because in city after city after city after city throughout this country, that's what they're doing. It is a communist takeover city by city by city done through legislation rather than force. It's a trick. It's a Trojan horse. That's what it is. Bottom line, people need to study this and see what's going on, man. It's not a conspiracy theory. It's coming to pass right before our eyes. And as voters, we are in part to blame because we keep putting these very same people in office. And then when they push these policies and these ordinances, we cry and we boohoo and we get attitudes about what's going on. And we get mad at the police because the police not doing anything. When you put in office with your votes, a person that believes that the police are purposely abusing black people because they're black. So let's defund them. And when you defund the police, you move their resources out. So the police start leaving or they drag their feet when it comes to actually dealing with the crime in the black community. Come on, man. Come on. We are our own demise. We are the cause of our own demise. We're destroying ourselves because we simply refuse to see the other side. But me personally, I ain't feeling that, baby. I ain't feeling that. I'm not going that route and I'm going to continue to say what I'm saying and I'm going to continue to stand on it as long as I live. People can either receive it or reject it. You reject it, that's on you. You got free will. But I'm not going to reject the truth. And that's the way it is. That's my thought on it. What do you guys think about this mayor? Do you think he overreacted? I think he did. What do you think about this mayor? Leave your comments in the comment section below. Like, share, and subscribe to my channel. God bless you all and see you again.